Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. Well today, I want to share with you an update on our family milk cow, Lily, and what the future holds for her. So I wanted to come to you and bring you an update on our family milk cow, Lily. Now, those of you that have been with me for a while know about my sweet little Jersey and what a huge blessing, uh, what I call a heritage Jersey. She's full-blooded Jersey, so she's medium size, perfect size for us. But I'm gonna give you an update on her because, because she's had three calves with us, four total, and it's been some, uh, some type of ordeal each time. Now the sweet lady that we bought her from, she was an elderly lady that was hand milking three Jersey cows twice a day. So she was getting out of it. She was in her mid seventies and she said it was just becoming too much for her. So she was selling out her jerseys. Well, I bought Lily because to me she was the perfect size. She had the sweetest personality and she was the prettiest. That was kind of the, sealed the deal with her. And she had had no previous problems. Her first calf that she'd had with this uh, sweet lady, she uh, didn't have any problems. And I saw the calf, the calf was there. She's about probably about four or five months old, little heifer calf and did great. So she was bred back when we bought her when she had her first calf with us, which was Daisy, we named her Daisy. Um, Daisy came into the world a little bit slow. So she didn't really want to nurse. She, it took a couple of days to kind of get that going, but she, she did fine after that. So she, she kind of went over that threshold and she did fine. Lily did fine for the first two weeks. Now, normally, if, if a cow, a dairy cow is going to get milk fever, the, the standard understanding of that is that it's going to happen within the first three or four days from all the research that I had done prior to this. So once we got past that point, it never crossed my mind that Lily might come down with milk fever. And that's kind of a misnomer because you don't come down with milk fever. You actually, milk fever is a metabolic imbalance. And Jerseys are by far the worst of the dairy breeds to be susceptible to it. And what happens is when they birth and their lactation kicks in, they dump so much calcium, magnesium, and potassium into their milk supply, they draw it from their bones and their body. And so it throws them into a type of shock, for lack of a better word, and it can be fatal and it can be fatal very quick. And so what happened with her, after we got past that first three or four days, it never crossed my mind. I thought maybe we won't have one that's susceptible to that. Normally they don't do it with the first calf. So there was no history to go by for that. Two weeks out from birthing, she, I was looking out my kitchen window, thank the good Lord, and she laid out flat. Now when your cow, your adult cow, now a young calf may do this a little bit, but when an adult cow lays out flat, that's a problem, there's a major problem. So she laid out flat and I stopped what I was doing, run outside, couldn't get her up, you gotta try to get them up, I couldn't get her up, got the water hose on jet and I tried to just aggravate her, so that's a tip to keep in mind. Uh, aggravate her into getting up. I did get her up, called the vet. We hauled her and the baby to the vet. An infusion of an, or an IV of calcium, potassium, magnesium. And we saved her. So I knew then to be on, on the lookout for that. So we, the next calf, we had her bred. After that, the next calf to come along we did all the precautions we thought. We gave her a, a tube of calcium paste as soon as the calf was born. It was another little heifer calf. Did everything that we knew to do to prevent everything. A couple of things that we were learning though, her calves are not coming out um, with a strong suckling reflex. So, and with this one, same thing. And then also because the suckling reflex are 
when a calf nurses, it's going to cause the, ca the cow's uterus to continue with contractions after birth to help expel the placenta. So if you have a slow calf that's not doing that, then you can have a retained placenta, and we had that. So back to the vet we go. And so with that calf and with Lily, we were dealing with that. So we had to deal with the retained placenta, and, and then the calf did finally come around quick, pretty quick, and she started her, her nursing, and everything was good. So we thought we were out of the woods. Did all the precautions for milk fever, everything. Two weeks later, milk fever. So what we learned with her is that two weeks out, it's just going to happen. That's just, you know, you can, you can just kind of bank on it. So we had her bred back again. Um, this little calf that was born a week and a half ago was a little bull calf. I was hoping for another heifer, but I knew that the odds were working against me. But we'll talk about that again in a second, too. So he was born with almost no suckling reflex. Because he wasn't suckling, then Lily retained her afterbirth again, her placenta, and you've got this placenta hanging out the back of your cow, and what happens is that is going to die. That is dying tissue, and dying tissue is going to cause an infection. So you have to get it out. You have to get, you don't pull on it for, or anything at home. Don't do anything because you can tear it and leave some of it in her uterus, and that sets you up for infection. So we have, a, after 12 or 14 hours, I, I knew she wasn't going to expel it all because she didn't have a suckling calf on her. Her uterus was not contracting. She wasn't going to do that. Back to the vet we go again. Mama and baby. So we went through all of that and she had, she was already exhibiting symptoms. Well, we, well let me go back to five days we've been to the vet. Five days with that placenta. And what happened was even though my wonderful vet worked very, very hard to get that placenta out all in one piece and he felt real confident that he did, she still developed an infection. Now, we haven't seen any pieces or anything, but what we're having to do is go back and flush her every, uh, for the first three days, we went back every day and flushed her uterus. And then now we're going about every three days, and, and if it's not clear, we're flushing. So the last time that we went was Friday. This is being videoed on a Sunday, and it was almost clear, almost. But both of us decided, hmm, almost is not good enough. She's on some strong antibiotics, so we're, we're not going to be able to use the milk for a month. We're putting it off for a month because she's on some very strong antibiotics. She's going back again early next week and we're hoping that everything is clear so that's where we are with that but on the second or third visit to the vet with this she's exhibiting milk fever when i get there so she didn't go down or anything like that and as a matter of fact when i took her the day that she calved dr mars actually gave her a calcium paste so you know because it was just right at not long after she calved uh within 12 hours we still got it a couple of days later so she is just she's gonna get it and you know so that that's just thank goodness we were at the vet gave her an iv give her everything she needed she come right out of it and she's fine now to today the calf did after it took him a couple of days he was real slow it's kind of touch and go he wouldn't take a bottle he didn't know how to nurse he tried to nurse and he just couldn't figure it out he ended up having to have an iv of electrolytes and and a tube of nutrition and all kind of stuff at the vet so we have been <laughs> on an ordeal with this calf and, and this cow so we have made the decision to not breed her back we're not going to breed her back, not going to put her through it, not going to put us through it, not going to put a calf through it because they, they tend to be worse each time, more of a dummy calf syndrome. And I was hoping for a heifer calf this last time. Odds were against me. And now I thank the Lord I didn't have a heifer calf because I need to stop that um, lineage. 
I don't need to carry on with that because chances are the heifer calf would have the same problems uh, with her second calf and beyond. So we're going to cut it off here. This is her last calf. This little bull calf I actually had him banded while we were at the vet, so he's going to be a little steer. So he's going to be a great addition to our family pantry in the future. So uh, even though he's full-blooded Jersey, he's going to add some very significant protein, nutrition to our family. Now, Jersey steers don't get as beefy as, or muscly as a beef cow, but I've never had it. But from everything that I have researched, that it's wonderful meat and the fat is so rich, just like the Jersey cow has that yellow cream and it's so nutritious, the fat from a Jersey steer is the same way. So I'm counting many blessings with this little calf. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna breed Lily back. We are gonna continue to milk her. I'll be able to milk her for probably, as long as I keep her healthy and well fed, she will milk two or three years or longer. There's stories of them going into five years. But what that's gonna do is allow me to buy a very young heifer, Jersey heifer calf. I'd love a three day old, if I could, to raise up as my replacement Jersey cow, milk cow. So that's the plan. So if we do get a chance to do that, we're gonna be on the lookout for that. Uh, there's a couple of great Jersey dairies within 25 miles of me. As a matter of fact, where she was bred the last time was one of them. I'm gonna check with them. And uh, I'll bring you along if we do that um, and get us a little heifer calf. The reason I want her so young is because she's going to be hands-on. She's going to be a future milk cow, so she's going to be a pet. She's going to be, she's going to be cuddled and loved and touched and handled from every angle, especially her little udder area, because I want her to feel normal when we're back there and around there. So that's going to make a good family milk cow. So that's why we're doing that. So there's the update on Lily and the calf. Um, if you have some more questions or if you have some insight or if you have some similar stories, I'd love for you to share those in the comments below. Um, and as always, you know that I want to share this from the heart. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless.